Hi, I'm just Steve. Welcome to part two of my series on truth and Santa Claus. If you missed part one, I'll put a link to it over here. This second part may get confusing. There's a lot of sophisticated psychology going on here and some politics that may make some of you uncomfortable. You might want to take notes or at least find a younger, more agile mind to help explain the finer details. But there are some things I would like to clear up. Number one, Santa does not bring all the toys. That smarty pants brat down the street that likes to point out how impossible that would be? Yeah, he's right. Most of those toys are bought by parents. That's why the mall is so crowded the day after Thanksgiving. But how surprising is that? That's only a surprise if you forget what you already know about Santa. He never promised to deliver everyone a toy, not a single toy, let alone the plethora of stuff that wind up crowded underneath some kids' trees. No, when you think about the millions and millions of boys and girls out there, Santa never promised to bring them all a toy. His goal is much more modest than that. Santa's goal is to see that every good little girl and boy gets what they deserve. And most deserve a toy. But like most adults, most children today already have as much as they deserve and more. In America, we're a forgiving bunch. And we like to imagine that Santa is too. But that isn't really necessarily the case. It doesn't take all that much to get on the naughty list. And once you're there, well, you better hope mom and dad are ready to spring for the bill down at the mall. So that guy that bullies the new kid on the bus ride to school, yeah, all his presents, they came from mom and dad. That girl that always asks to borrow you homework and wants to look over your shoulder on the spelling quiz on Friday, yeah, she better hope that mom and dad are gonna come through too. Kids out there trying to sneak some of their uncle's cigarettes, forget it. Santa doesn't play that way. Those teeth haven't clenched the stump of a pipe in 50 years. And if you're one of those kids out there throwing gay around as an insult, not a chance. And non-believers, well, it goes without saying, well, why would he stop at their house? They don't believe in him, so why is he going to have any faith in them? So Santa doesn't really have all that many houses to go to in the first place. And his main concern is kids where mom and dad can't take care of things. I told you I've had some years that were tight, but I've also had years where I was able to let him know, you know what, you go take care of kids who are more needy. I've got things covered here. He appreciates that. This doesn't mean you've got no hope that Santa could ever stop by your house just because your parents might be doing all right. Sometimes he still steps in because he has a way of knowing better than your parents do sometimes what you really need or ought to have, sometimes even better than you do yourself. He's good that way. So why do so many parents claim to know that Santa doesn't exist, that he isn't real? Two words, selective memory. What this means is we human beings Adults, kids, teachers, businessmen, politicians, all kinds of people, we have a remarkable ability to step right in and take credit for the most amazing things even though we in fact had very little to do with them. You want to know what I'm talking about? There was this thing a while back. The president, he stuck his foot in his mouth. That's a thing all politicians do on a pretty regular basis. And said something about how business people hadn't built their success all on their own, that they'd actually gotten quite a bit of help from government. Why, you'd think he'd suggested that every business owner out there was a robber baron out to steal the bingo money from their own mother's sock drawer. This got them all up in a tizzy and before you know it that selective memory kicked in they had done it all by themselves there wasn't any interstate highway commission allowing trucks and businesses and customers to get in to see them there wasn't any federal aviation industry letting planes deliver goods or, and customers there wasn't any small business administration helping out with loans and other services to help them succeed out here in california we didn't have any mulholland canal system making it possible to live in a desert no hoover dam supplying electricity to half the western states the entire west hadn't been largely settled thanks to a homestead act that didn't provide land that was available because the government had stepped in and bought up that land in the Louisiana Purchase, and they didn't spread across the country on trains that were part of the Transcontinental Railroad built on lands that were granted from the government. Even the discovery of this great continent so that European peoples could come and start ripping it off from Native Americans that lived here would never have been possible without grants from Queen Isabella and her ilk funding the explorers and ships built at taxpayer expense. So if people can forget all that and take credit for doing it all themselves, how hard do you think it is for them to buy one or two trinkets, put them under the tree, wake up in the morning with a wealth of riches there and suddenly remember that, yeah, I did that and feel pretty good about themselves. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't take but a second or two. When if they took a minute to think about it, they'd know. There are far more toys under that tree than they can reasonably afford. Heaven knows most years there's more toys under that tree than I can afford to be spending on fun times. That's for sure. So where do they come from? Only one place that I can think of. And that's why I believe. Well, that and having him stop by Thanks for watching part two of my series on truth in Santa Claus. To review, parents' use of selective memory causes them to forget who has actually helped them out in the past and how much. You may recall all the times they've forgotten how often you've helped with the dishes when you need that ride to the movies and the extra $20 for dinner afterwards. In part three's conclusion, we'll take the toughest issues head on with special points to help parents out there who are struggling still trying to understand the most important points of what is and what isn't real about Santa Claus.